Inflation is on the menu, for food and for pretty much everything. EBT increased by 25%, an indirect admission of 25% inflation. I guess mass starvation will be the deserved dessert for some people. I am not sure all these diabetic land whales will make it through. Control food, and you control people. With food prices rising and rising, farmers cutting crop production, and government manipulation in all of it, people will be losing it soon. Just remember, our government will take your home from you if you don't pay your $3,000 property tax per year, but then will turn around and pay $800 a month to an apartment complex under Section 8 housing rules for an illegal to live there. Freedom. The push to vax pass is proceeding and will take time to fully implement. Once complete, the citizens of the world will be captured. It is not about health but a tracking system that will include financial controls using digital currency and the elimination of cash. The public will be controlled and monitored 24-7 and if they say you cannot be more than one mile from your home, your funds will be locked if you disobey. Your location will be known by the tracking features that will initially exist in your phone. The financial system is bankrupt and pensions and savings have been stolen and it's a matter of time before the house of cards falls. The inevitable collapse will be orchestrated in such a way as to blame the unvaxxed for the supply chains breaking down. As the unvaxxed get fired for not conforming to the mandates, companies will not have enough staff to operate, which will have the same effect as pulling the pin on the grenade. The coming lockdowns will be the final blow to small businesses and will get the globalists closer to the elimination of the middle class. The coming lockdowns will be brutal and more restrictive. Combined with the financial collapse and pension payouts vaporizing, those who survive will be broke. The war against those resisting the vax pass will take time and dissenters will be starved into submission when the vax pass restricts your ability to buy whatever food is left on the shelves. We are in the midst of the culling and destruction phase before the BB Better program will be implemented with obedient sheep that are tracked with their assets digitized and controlled. The many relying on gov subsidies to exist will be the easiest to control when threats of being cut off ability to exist can be quickly implemented with a keystroke. On a scale of 1 to 10 with 10 being their final goal of control, we are at a 4. It's not too late to change this, but the window quickly closing. We the people must wake up or learn to live on your knees while wearing your submissive face covering and kissing the ring of World Economic Forum masters to get a scrap to eat while they steal everything from us. You will own nothing and be happy, which really means, your masters will steal everything including your homes, and those who survive the culling will be happy to be alive and be grateful for the scraps you receive. Biden will probably be the last president of the US. Such a pathetic collapse for the United States empire. Anyway, the whole West will follow dementia Biden into the abyss since it is part of the globalist, Great Reset Agenda. I am just curious to observe how the Marxists, leftists useful idiots will react here. When the sheet hits the fan, the momentum of this absolute engineered collapse will finally be triggered. There's nothing more demoralizing than working for 80% of the salary of another man, especially when that man doesn't have any special skills to make them more valuable than you. We need to reduce the pay of government workers. Food staples are cheap in this country. The USA has lots of excellent farmland and a very modern agriculture and transport system. Potatoes, rice, beans, pasta, canned vegetables, flour, eggs, butter, peanut butter, bread and such are cheap and abundantly available. If you know where to shop, and can get there, and how to cook you can eat very well for not much money. A salmon steak at the supermarket is the same cost as a crappy meal at McDonald's is correct. But, and it's a big but, or but if you prefer, people don't want to mess around cooking food staples into simple meals. For a variety of reasons the supermarket sells far more processed convenience foods than they do 20 hash sacks of potatoes, even to people of extremely limited means. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. An unprecedented number of households are in desperate financial need right now. Millions of Americans missed their rent or mortgage payments last month, millions missed their student loan payments, and millions are falling into poverty. The economic downturn that was sparked by the coronavirus pandemic has stretched on far longer than most people originally anticipated, and many Americans are simply running out of money at this point. In fact, 
One survey that was conducted not too long ago found that 40% of all households have used up all or most of their savings, and 74% of families with children that make less than $100,000 a year have experienced serious financial problems during this crisis. Nationwide, food insecurity has become a pervasive problem. The percentage of families with children who reported not having enough to eat more than tripled in July compared with 2020. One report found nearly half of American families lived with hunger in the summer. Another found more than 40% of surveyed households with children had used up all or most of their savings by early August. Children in households making less than $100,000 have been especially affected, 74% of those families experience serious financial problems. Those are deeply alarming numbers. If nearly half of U.S. families are living with hunger now, how bad will things get if the U.S. economy takes another turn for the worse? One hard-working American that has almost reached her breaking point is a 43-year-old veteran and mother of three named Kenicha Jones. By early October, Kenicha Jones was close to giving up. It had been seven months since she or her husband had steady work. Seven months since her three school-aged children, including a 14-year-old daughter with autism who is blind, nonverbal and immunocompromised, had been to school. Four months since a shooting on her block left her car and her family's rented house in North Columbus, Ohio, riddled with bullet holes and her 12-year-old daughter struggling with severe post-traumatic stress disorder. When she received the first stimulus check from the federal government, she used it all to pay utility bills that were past due. But since then there have been no more checks, and the bills have just continued to pile up. She continues to fight for the sake of her family, but she admits that she is really, really tired. I'm so tired, Joan said. It seems nothing is getting a little better. The only thing that keeps me trying is my family. Have you ever felt like she is feeling right now? I think that most of us have at some point in our lives. All across the country, unemployed workers are becoming very desperate because they are starting to exhaust their unemployment benefits and they still haven't been able to find jobs. One such individual is a chemist in Ohio named Kate McAfee. New research from J.P. Morgan Chase Institute and the University of Chicago focused on 80,000 unemployed people shows savings built up when the government provided aid is now rapidly running out, leaving people like chemist Kate McAfee fretting about their futures. I'm still unemployed, said McAfee, who was laid off from her job outside Cleveland back in April. I've now exhausted my 26 weeks of unemployment here in Ohio and have moved on to the additional 13 weeks of extended benefits from the federal government. Since the pandemic started, more than 64 million Americans have filed new claims for unemployment benefits, and every single one of those workers has a unique story. Most of them had at least some savings, but when you are not working month after month, those savings tend to disappear very quickly. Now as we approach the holiday season a lot of people have completely run out of money and lots of bills are starting to go unpaid. For example, it is being reported that over 6 million households didn't pay their rent or mortgage last month. More than 6 million households failed to make their rent or mortgage payments in September, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's Research Institute for Housing America, a sign that the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic is weighing on jobless Americans as Congress stalls on relief measures. And we are also being told that approximately 26 million Americans didn't make their student loan payment last month. In September, roughly 26 million people missed their student loan payment. The proportion of student debt borrowers who missed a monthly payment has remained steady at 40% since May. We have never seen anything like this before. Just like during the last recession, vast numbers of Americans that once lived comfortable middle-class lifestyles are rapidly falling into poverty. In fact, one recent study found that 8 million Americans have fallen into poverty just since the month of May. Some 8 million Americans have fallen below the poverty level since May, after federal stimulus money dried up and Congress did not follow up with more relief legislation, according to a new study. Meanwhile, the economic recovery has slowed down as more than 55 million Americans are now earning less than $26,200 a year, which is what the federal government considers the poverty line. Coming into this year, most Americans were living paycheck to paycheck and were very deep in debt. That works okay as long as the paychecks keep coming in, but once they stop things can take a disastrous turn very quickly. Today, the average American has accumulated $90,460 in debt, and Generation X is drowning in more debt than anyone else. Generation Z, 
ages 18 to 23, $9,593. Millennials, ages 24 to 39, $78,396. Generation X, ages 40 to 55, $135,841. Baby Boomers, ages 56 to 74, $96,984. Silent Generation, ages 75 and above, $40,925. The sad truth is that most of the U.S. population is simply not in any position to handle times of extreme financial stress. Unfortunately, this pandemic is not going away anytime soon, and that means that industries all over America will continue to let more workers go as economic conditions continue to deteriorate. And as economic conditions continue to get worse, the level of economic suffering that Americans like Kenicha Jones and Kate McAfee are experiencing will continue to intensify. This has already been such a challenging time for our country, and to be honest, the days ahead are looking quite bleak at this point. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe, sane, and healthy friends.